Dips are one of the best exercises you can do for your upper body. It's often referred to as the upper body squat due to its effectiveness of building up the chest, shoulders and triceps. But also at the same time, dips can be very harsh on your joints and tendons. A lot of people suffer from pain when doing the dips and I myself have suffered from a nagging chest injury for the past year and a half or so which has prevented me from doing dips. But very recently, I've managed to cure that nagging chest injury and now I can perform dips pain-free. So I'm gonna to explain to you the steps I took to get over that chest injury and hopefully help some of you who are suffering the same issue. Before I get into this, I just wanna point out that my injury was a muscle strain. If your actual sternum, so your chest bone, hurts when you're doing dips, then that's a problem with your amphipometry and quite simply, you're just not built to do the movement. That is quite a common problem people run into when doing the dips, so you're going to need to do something else in replace of the dips. Otherwise, you're gonna risk injury to your chest or shoulders. But with that being said, let's get into it. The first tip would be to do dips as a second or third press in your session when your chest and shoulders are already warmed up and pumped. This step has made the most impact for me out of all of these steps because even now, if I go into dips as the first press of my session, I get a low level of uncomfortability and it just doesn't feel good on my chest and shoulders. So, if you're suffering from chest or shoulder pain, do dips as the last press in your session and then over time, gradually move it closer and closer to the start of your session until you reach a point where you can do dips at the beginning as the first press with just a basic small warm up. The second tip would be before and after every single session, work on your chest and shoulder mobility. Now there's probably thousands of videos on YouTube that go into the intricate details of working on your chest and shoulder mobility. So you can search them up if you want. But basically, you wanna work on your chest, shoulder, and your thoracic mobility. So thoracic is the ability to lift your chest up like this. Personally, I only worked on two mobility exercises to help me overcome this injury. The first stretch I did was just a basic chest and shoulder stretch, where you have your arm at 90 degrees, you place it against the wall or something, and you turn away from it. It's important when you're doing this exercise to move your arm up and down to put the emphasis of the stretch on different areas of the chest and shoulder. And also another important point when performing stretches is you really wanna focus on your breath. So every time you exhale, you really wanna visualize your muscles getting looser and almost yield into the stretch. Doing this breathing technique is gonna relax your nervous system and allow for your muscles to go deeper into the stretch, making it more effective. Similar to what people do in yoga when they focus on their breath. And the second thing I did, I'm not really sure what these are called, but it's where you grab a broomstick and you move it from in front of your body, overhead to behind your body. Doing this is really gonna open up those chest and shoulders. So you wanna start with a really wide grip at first and then over time, you wanna gradually move your grip in and get more narrower. Doing that's gonna really increase the stretch. And also, you wanna keep your glutes squeezed throughout the whole movement. So don't cheat and arch your back to get that mobility. Keep those glutes squeezed and really focus on your chest and shoulders opening up when you do it. When I did this, I didn't really count the reps I was doing. I would just keep doing the exercise until I felt like my shoulders were loosened up. So I would say anywhere from 20 to 50, even above 50 reps. The most important thing would be to really focus on the control and technique of the mobility exercise and just go until you feel like your body has loosened up. The third step would be to use a mirror and limit your range of motion. For most people, their active range of motion pain-free is gonna be around when your upper arm is parallel to the floor. Using a mirror makes this much easier to do because you can use the visual cues to gauge how much of a range of motion you are doing. 
It's important to only go as low as you can pain free to avoid injury. What I noticed was with each set of the dip, my range of motion increased slightly so I could get a bit more of a stretch the more and more I did the dips in the session. So don't rush the range of motion, the flexibility will come over time. And the final step I took was changing up my form. In my opinion, this was also another game changer. So what I did before was keep my shoulders pinned back, really poke my chest out and get a deep stretch on the chest in the bottom of the dip. Doing that now is very uncomfortable and it causes a low level of pain in my chest. So the technique I use now would be similar to a gymnastic style of dip where I keep a hollow position body, keep my shoulders slightly rolled forward so I keep a hollow chest as they would call it and I stay fairly upright when I do the dip. This style of dip hits my triceps way harder than my chest but to me the trade-off is worth it because I can perform these full range of motion pain-free. And also, just because of the mechanics of the dip, my chest is still getting hit very hard. It's still a horizontal press. So if the current style of dip you're doing is causing you pain, just switch it up. Play around with the body, the elbow, the shoulder positions. Find a technique that you can perform full range of motion that doesn't cause you any pain. So that is everything I have to say on that topic. In general, if an exercise is causing you pain and discomfort, don't just completely disregard it straight away. Play around with different techniques, different hand or feet positions, play around with mobility and stretching exercises, really try and find out what is causing you the pain and try and find a way of performing that exercise that is pain-free for you. So with all that being said, Try it out for yourself, see how you go from there. Till next time, peace.